Tron. What's going on guys, it is T90 Official and welcome to a 1v1 Age Vampires 2 game. The usual. Well, not really. Not really. Yeah, you never know anymore. Might have a legend video, might have a team game, might be a community game, but we have a 1v1. And this, yeah, this is kind of the usual for pro players when they're playing regular rated matches. They see a 1v1 on Arabia. Uh, I, I never actually watched this game. I didn't even watch the full recorded game because I don't like to be spoiled. But I heard that this one was pretty good. And we have two my favorite players in the game, in the community, in the world here. We have MBL in the blue. And he's playing as the Saracens. And we have Hera, who's a Canadian wonder kid. And he's playing as the Vikings. So before I get into the maps uh, and into the sieves, when I first started casting games, it was in the beginning of a rather long lull in the community uh, when it comes to pro play. Uh, players like Doubt, was, he wasn't active. Viper was actually completely inactive for almost a year. And so I didn't really have many players cast that were at the high level, except for MBL and Hera. Uh, back then, they played Hun, Hun Wars, but uh, I think they were both in school or something. I, I don't really remember what their life situation was like at the time, but I do recall that any time I got on, they would be playing. They played 10, 11 hours a day, every day, and so it was beautiful for a young commentator like myself who needed to practice because uh, I had games all the time, and it was at a pretty high level. So... It's exciting to see, you know, three years later that, that these guys are still playing. Hera, I called him a Canadian wonder kid because he was, I think, the youngest person to ever reach number one on the, the Voodly rating ladder. I believe he was 14 when he did it. Uh, he's 16 now? 17? I don't even know. He, he'll forever be 14 in my eyes, but uh, he is a, an amazing young player, oftentimes forgotten about just because he's not quite as active as players like Leary, who are also very young. And obviously, he doesn't really have the tournament results of Leary to to have a name for himself yet, but he's he's one of my favorites. I think he's one of the fastest players in the game. It doesn't necessarily mean better, but I do think that he's one of the fastest players in the game. So anyway, Saracens and Vikings. You know, I'm just now realizing that virtually every game that I've casted over the past couple hours here, because I've been recording some YouTube stuff, has had Saracens in it. So apparently, uh, Saracen Civilization is the most entertaining civ in the game, guys. Because, yeah, we're seeing a lot of it. So get used to it. So Saracens is a strong civ, and oftentimes the struggle with them is just getting to their options. Whereas Vikings, they're pretty strong all around because they have an economy bonus where Saracens don't. Is Hera gonna lame here? Oh! Oh, he's okay, he's gonna try and block MBL's Ville. Oh, and MBL just did the house trick to de-aggro the boar for a moment. And he'll actually bring this boar in safely. That was a cute little play there from MBL. Uh, for those that, that might be confused as to what just happened there. Well, MBL is known for laming. So he either steals boars or he blocks vills when vills are, are bringing in the boar. And what you do is, let's say the boar is here and the villager is here is you get your scout and you run it back and forth in front of the villager to block the pathing. And that boar has already decided that he wants to attack the villager because the villager shot him twice. So the villager then just kind of gets wedged in between the scout and the boar and, and the boar finishes off the vill and you, you lose a villager, the boar goes back, you have to send another one. It's pretty annoying when that happens to you. But what you can do is, and it's not very easy to do, you can place a house over top of where the boar is exactly and then if you tap that house, so that means you actually have to hit it, then uh, the, the boar kind of bugs out, I guess, and he goes back to his original spot. So that that was quick recognition from MBL that he was going to be lamed. So it's not easy to lame the lame master, apparently. So MBL is going for what's known as a drush. So you make a few militia, and that is to harass your opponent's economy and to give yourself a little bit of time. And again, I said Saracens, they need that time. So he'll have a longer Dark Age, but a stronger economy later on because of this. And I'm not sure if MBL is drushing because he knows Vikings are a good sieve to drush with or what, but Hera is doing the same thing. So we will have uh, one partially weak scout for both, and three full HP militia, and they're both running forward. Will MBL see Hera here? 
Oh, he sees him. And it's really interesting just what direction they choose to go. Like, that's not a bad start there for Hera because he got the shots in on the scout. And the scout's very important in these fights. Yeah, Hera has a lead here, I'd say. Yeah, MBL wants to keep his scout alive, so he'll just trade as, as good as he can. And what Hera will do now is he'll use his scout to attack, and then every time MBL turns around to attack the scout, he just runs back. So, MBL, he will be in Feudal Age first. So this is kind of a drush into Archer build, I believe. Archers and Skirms. But he can't do anything about this right now. So Hera can get free scouting information. And Hera will click up as well behind this to the Feudal Age. Just needs a little bit of food. He'll drop it off either by jumping into the TC or dropping off the berries. Yep, and he clicks up. So again, the, the initial... The reason that the Drush is a thing is because it's annoying, right? You can see MBL is being a little bit annoyed by this, so he's probably down, I don't know, two, three, four gold from what he would normally be at if that militia and scout wasn't there. And again, I said Hare is a very quick player, right? So he's able to be annoying and, and just get out before he loses his units. And MBL could actually lose his villager once Hera hits Feudal Age, because his scout, his scout will be a bit faster. Now, I like the gold position for MBL. I like the gold position for Hera. I didn't get too much time to talk about the maps. But gold position's very safe for what they're trying to do here. MBL has a lot of back resources. He has back stone, gold, wood. And there are his archery ranges, which he is building before Hera will build his. And so I kind of like MBL's position, just because he'll have that military sooner or earlier. But you have to keep in mind that Hera will have free wheelbarrow, which is the one big thing about Vikings. And where will he place his ranges there? So his economy will be stronger in Feudal Age. I love the scouting from both players. This is really, these are a lot of small things that, that end up going a long way. You see the scouting from Hera. He's even letting MBL know that he knows the archer rangers are there. So he needs to look for pressure points. So now he's seeing, okay, my opponent doesn't have a lot on gold. So he's definitely not going for two range archers. Oh, but he's going back in for the vill? I think he'll kill the villager here. Wow, he kills the vill and he gets out alive with his scout. So Hera ran in, he, he was clicking the Vill HP, he realized which one was the weak one, and now he can scout, and I was just going to say he hadn't seen this woodline, but now he can see it. So, great job from Hera, and he's walling up at home. I'm not streaming this one, but if I was, I'd tell everyone to get the T90 walls in the chat. And, oh, you know what? This is a, a slower than normal Drush Fast Castle build. So Hera is not going for two ranges. He's just going for walls, and he wants to get to Castle Age faster. So he will have to defend versus MBL. MBL was expecting the archers, so he made straight skirms. That's what I was going to get to, because MBL didn't have the gold bills. And this is a smart decision. However, skirmishers, they won't break through the walls. They won't offer all that much to MBL besides a bit of harassment. And Hera will be in Castle Age soon, so he'll have the, the crossbows available. And Bodkin Arrow, Siege Workshops, Extra TCs, all that. So MBL will find out in a moment's time that this is fully walled. And he probably expects that. So what you could do if you're MBL is get behind the wood line and just make villagers relocate. If Hera had to have all of his lumberjacks on the right side of the lumber camp, it'd be inefficient. So you could go for that. But Also, you have to be very careful that Hera doesn't sneak army out. Because you need to be... You know, you're in Feudal Age at home, right? Sure, you'll have your own walls, but you can't have crossbows at your base. It's still open. They could fire over top the walls, so... You really need to keep an eye on the archery ranges. Because what Hera wants to do now is he wants to sneak out with a group of about five or six. And he wants to get to MBL's base. So when you go for this Drush Fast Castle build with Vikings, it's really strong because... Oftentimes it's a weak build because you don't have the wheelbarrow upgrade. 
but he already has that. And so he can't afford to research Bodkin Arrow and Crossbow, which is really tough to do when you advance to Castle Age so quickly off a of Drush. And MBL, he doesn't have Fletching. He, he doesn't have any armor. So sure, he has Skirmishers, but he'll be outranged and he'll be, he'll be outmassed as well. So you see him sending more Skirmishers forward now. You know, he, he did maybe a smart thing with being late on the upgrades because he has so many resources now and one small bonus that the Saracens do have is their market so we might see him use the market to get to Castle Age soon but he's going to need to micro and he's not in an ideal situation now he has more numbers but he can't close in and Hera's micro is so good Hera's gotten three kills already so it's just how many units will MBL have to sacrifice to get in close here. And now he's killing a few crossbows, but you can see just how weak these skirmishers are versus this amount of crossbows. He has no armor upgrade. So the Drushfast castle build from Hera working extremely well. You can see his, his fighting has been much better than MBL's. 18 kills and 6 deaths. Unfortunately, MBL's walls will buy him a bit of time. He's still going to be going with skirmishers. In fact, 3 ranges. But MBL needs something, and he's going to stone wall. So he's walling with five villagers. He is... Again, his economy isn't as good, so this is going to be a real uphill battle for MBL. Uh, good thing is that Hera has not scouted that there's stone walls behind. I think Hera would have probably left here. Would have looped around if he knew the stone walls were going up. He's just now finding out. I wonder if it's worth it to attack the lumber camp there. Probably not. So you, you want to loop around. And he will kind of go right where MBL wants it. So MBL gets to this wood line, which is quite inefficient because it's, there's a ton of lumberjacks for just one lumber camp. But MBL will have the hill. And I think he's going to have the time. Like he, he might need to relocate a bill or two. Because the farmers could be too close to the crossbows. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, perfect example here. <laughs> yeah, he relocates the farmer. But he will have a lead skirm soon. So MBL really needs an engagement now. And Hera's using this crossbow to scout. He, he doesn't know what MBL is going for for sure. So, okay, now he sees it will be skirm. Now it's Hera, so he might fight this until the upgrade comes in, and oh, MBL splits here. Look at the little splits. Oh, he, he's avoiding the crossbow fire. Elite Skirm takes a long time to complete, but a Hera, he's taking advantage of that. I still don't like the fight, though. I mean, I guess he's killed quite a few skirmishers. His KD's looking pretty strong, but he has just given MBL an opportunity to push out. Yeah, I think it might have been better... Oh, and he's forgotten about his crossbows. I think it might have been better for Hera to run this way, make MBL chase him, and then send in another group around to this hill. Just keep MBL on the run a little bit, because when you lose that many units, that means MBL will no longer be surprised, and MBL can make a comfortable push forward. It makes it kind of an easy decision for him to know what to do. MBL is building his second town center, and he really needs to, because he's behind six villagers already. And it is three TCs for Hera, so if Hera is producing out of all town centers, and he is, Hera's going to have quite a big lead. And not only do you get free wheel when you're in Feudal Ages, Vikings, you get free hand carts. So these are some huge economic upgrades that you need. So it's definitely up to MBL now to push back. He's also about to be on three town centers, but that will only maintain his 10 villager disadvantage. It won't get any worse, but it will not get any better. It can only get better if he attacks now. And I love the Siege Workshop from here. Great decision. A Mackinac or two will kill all the skirmishers. And all oh, the micro now is so good from here. Look at the dodges here. Again, it might not be ideal, but he gets a good shot with the Mackinac. Um, I think, I think Hera, he takes fights that are so unnecessary at times here. Like, he's having fun with the micro, but he's kind of playing into MBL's hands, because MBL's skirmisher army was a dead army walking there, and 
and be able to get a few more trades versus crossbows. But anyway, Ahara still cleans it up. Still maintaining a positive KD. And he will get ballistics here in a moment, I think, so he will not miss with his shots and MBL can't dodge. What's MBL going to do? Well, you can see he's abusing the market. But now he's getting wheel, right? So, you know, his economy is, is just now catching up. I love the Saracen Civilization. I do, because they have so many strong options in late game. They have strong infantry. They have their ranged units. They have their camels. They have their siege. They have four strong directions they can go. And there's really not a lot they can't do. They can't get Cavalier, but they still get Heavy Camel. They still get Hussar. Their tech tree is just amazing. And then you, you think about water. Or it's even strong on water as well. If there's one thing I know about MBL. He has an amazing ability at coming back in games. And he's certainly behind now. And he prepared for those crossbows. He knew that Hera would go back there. And so he'll send another Mackinel there, I guess, as he loops around, just keeping himself safe. But what's interesting, guys, is he's not attacking. He is not going on the offensive. He is... Uh, this is what we call a farm TC. It's very rare <laughs> that you see farm TCs at the high level. It's not ideal. You normally want to be next to wood or gold. I guess you didn't know that was there. Otherwise, you would have placed it there. But... Um, you know, he's not doing anything offensive, and Harris on the way up to the next age. So just like MBL needed to do in Feudal Age, he needs to buy himself time. When he was in Feudal, he bought himself time while Harris was in Castle, and now he's in Castle Age MBL. And he needs to buy himself time while Harris will be in the Imperial Age. I believe it will be a similar situation where he'll have Skirms, because Maganels are not very helpful now. Maganels die pretty quickly to, to any Arbalest, and that's exactly what Hera is going for. You know, the, the downside of this early imp push from Hera is that he will not have any access to Trebs. If you went to stone earlier, so he could have a castle, then his Imperial Age would have been later. So, in these situations, a great way to protect yourself is to build a castle at home. And I see MBL abusing the market, but really he's just building, he's buying stone for TCs. He's on one, two, three, four, five TCs. And he just traded a Mackinel one for one there. <clears throat> so MBL's catching up in the bill count. He is. And yeah, you can see him using the market now. I mean, he's using his civilization strength and he will click up to Imp. So I don't remember the exact time difference. Actually, I can show you, I think. Uh, what was the exact time difference? So there was... Yeah, quite a significant difference. A four-minute difference to Castle Age. Uh, that will not be as extreme, but it's close. There's a three-minute difference now to the Imperial Age. So there's a pretty big time window now for Hera. He's getting his upgrades now to push forward. MBL could go for Elite Skirmisher long-term, but that does get questionable. Now that Hera is going to stone, he could always make the Zerks to counter the Elite Skirms. Uh, I don't know what MBL's plan will be. Will it just be Siege, maybe? He sees his opponent has Arbalest now. He's making a few Mackinels. This is not going to be easy for him. These Arbalests are extremely strong, and it's a pretty... Pretty big score lead. Goodness, pretty big score lead for Hera. <laughs> He's ahead by 40 population. Hera needs to push now, but he should be in a quite a comfortable position to do so. Now one situation, or one good situation for MBL is the hills. So that means his Mackinels will do a little bit more damage. And the Arbalest and Mackinels from Hera will do a little bit less damage. And there's two good engagements for MBL. Look at that. He kills a Mackinel. He kills a Battering Ram. He's buying himself time, guys. He has a Siege Workshop on this hill and on this hill. And I believe he wants to go for the Onager upgrade. 
And Harris here, he's just gonna ram everything down. Uh, you should go for the archer ranges, I think. I mean, anything you take out here is nice, but you want to avoid the houses because of MBL's Maganels. MBL has lots of resources. Remember, he really had the map for this because he had the resources in the back. And he's researching Onager now. Even with Onager, with Hera's Micro, Hera might not have any issues with killing the Arbs, but the problem, or sorry, with uh, killing the Onagers with his Arbalest. But the issue with that risky micro is you could easily lose all your momentum in one, with one mistake. And MBL is extremely good at using the attack ground hotkey in these situations. Oh my god, this is Hera's point of view. Hera does not know there's a siege workshop on this hill. Now he does. A Maganel's on the way out. This is just as Onager is going to complete. And there's one attack round from MBL he misses. Oh my goodness. MBL needs to come out now. This is this is his one and only opportunity, I think. Okay, he thinks twice about it, I guess. But he's here! Harris should see this! Oh my god! Oh my god! What is Harris doing? Oh my god! I was not expecting that many armless to go down. Harris didn't even attack. I guess Harrod was worried about his economy or something else, but <laughs> Harrod says LOL, and that proves my point with the Onagers, guys. That proves my point. He's sure. Hera could have microed it down. He really could have. With a couple splits, he could have killed all the Onagers. This could be game over. But also, he could lose all of his army, and that's what Onagers can do for you. Look at the score now. This is a game again. And Hera is probably not pleased, despite saying LOL. And what he will do is he will mix in stables. So, not ideal as Vikings to be going for Cav. But I think it's a good decision because MBL doesn't really have anything to protect from melee. So, going with Light Cav would be a nice decision to pick off these Onagers. It's still a game that Hera is winning. Uh, he's built his castle now to secure his gold. He's... He has the extra gold here, which I just showed you a moment ago. Um, there's got to be another gold out here somewhere. He doesn't see that, but it's not like MBL's on it yet. And MBL is going for Light Cav as well, by the way. So you can see him getting upgrades at the top right. And wow, Hera's actually going for Cavalier. I'm going to be honest. I mean, that is quite an investment. Cavalier is still much stronger than Light Cav, but it's, it's just a matter of cost here for him. And long term, you are playing against Saracens as well, so it's not like it gets any easier when your opponent can make camels. But you see how MBL isn't very concerned with pushing out. He's just soaking up all the resources. And why not? He has them all back here. He still needs more time for Saracens to be better than Vikings, so... Why not? And he must see this gold here. He also sees the outpost from Harris. So both players doing the same thing. They want to pressure this. A castle on that hill would be huge for either player. And Hera, where does he place that castle? Um, okay, he's going to place a castle defensively, which is still a good decision. They're doing all the late game stuff now, getting as many relics as possible, getting as many gold piles as possible. And Hera does have mobility, he's very good with mobility. And so he comes in now and he should kill MBL's villagers and he might be able to take control of this gold for a little while. And now he sees that his opponent has a mess of light calves and onagers. Look at that force, this is what I'm talking about with Saracen's guys. What a crazy number of units. And now MBL will go not only light cab, but he will go heavy camel. So he'll mix in the camels. This is after seeing his opponent has gone cavalier. So I, I'd say the cavalier have worked so far because their mobility has worked. Uh, they could pick off the onagers, but I, I just wonder if going light cab would have done the same. You know? I'll tell you what would be good here. Elite Berserk. With full upgrades, Elite Berserk, the one thing 
that really kill all those camels in Light Cavern. And of course it could be Hussar. But then again, it it takes a while to close in to those units, right? And MBL has a lot of siege monitors. <laughs> and we already saw what he can do versus the Arbalest earlier. I'm sure he could do the same versus any melee units that come forward. He has a lot of upgrades, guys. He will have full upgrades on his Camels and Light Calf. I have, I of course am just leaving out the unique upgrade that Saracens get for their, uh, their Camels, but... We'll see if he gets there. He's gonna build a castle now. He just purchased the stone for it. He's scouting around with his Light Calf, and that scouting is gonna end there. Because he knows Hera still has more map control. Hera is building a castle on this hill. He will secure this gold. And Biel still possibly not at the point where he can push this. And this is giving Hera some time. 192 population for Hera. 171 population for MBL. And oh my god, these honors, that's so many. Like, how do you even approach this? It's so tough. If you were a civilization that had Bombard Cannon, you could go Bombard Cannon and hope to pick off the Onagers from range. But this is a lot of numbers from MBL. This is pretty insane. And he must see that his opponent's building stables here. Oh, and he sees his opponent is building a castle, so he's going to build his own. He needs to protect his flanks so Hera can't raid him. Because Hera does have more map control, which really puts him in the position to hit from the sides. And this side is already protected. But it's this side that needs to be protected next. Oh my god, he's gonna build two castles here? Alright. Well, well, well. One relic for both. Harris still needs to get upgrades on his Zerks. They're elite, but he needs to get all the defense upgrades. He's doing that now. And this is as MBL gets Zealotry, so that means the Heavy Camels will have more HP. Hey, maybe Mamelukes? I mean, I've been saying for the past year that Mamelukes just aren't very strong in the competitive scene nowadays, but this could possibly be a situation to mix in a few if the Zerks start coming out. Because you definitely don't want to fight Zerks. Um, fight with... I'm sorry, I can't talk. You definitely do not want to engage versus Zerks if you have heavy camels, despite their HP. But, wow, these camels will destroy the Cavalier. Hair wanted to run in to pick off the traps. We'll see if that decision pays off here. His, his leap of Zerks are here. It's really just all about the positioning. And you, you have to give the edge to MBL here, because MBL has more castles and he's more numbers. He does not have as many trebuchets. It's actually two to two. Oh god! Oh, Harris just patrolled forward! Who loses Arbalus? Who loses Arbalus? Oh my god! The camels are holding. You know, it's just a lack of upgrades for Hera's Zerks. And he's, of course, running underneath the castle fire as well. Hera will not kill MBL's castles. He will lose his castle. He'll lose his trebuchets on top of his Arbalus. This is obviously not the best game ever for Hera. Look at MBL's KD, 151 kills, 88 deaths. And now I think he'll switch into some Arbalest of his own. Seems like it anyway. There's just, M There's just blue units everywhere. Hera is really struggling to keep up with this. Yeah, you got camels ready to golds. And now that Hera needs to address this side and defend on this side, he could easily lose on the right side as he's not prioritizing, but he's not able to decide on where to pressure right now. Oh my god! The Onagers from MBL, did you see that? The headshots on the Zerks! What did I say? MBL is a beast when it comes to using these Onagers. These Zerks are fully upgraded now. I think they might lack the Chieftain's upgrade, which would help them more versus Camels, but... Jeez! Boom, headshot! And MBL's actually killing his own Camels here, which is kind of funny. You can see the bodies, but not a big deal when he kills so many enemy units. And now he's building yet another castle here. This will be the fourth castle for MBL this game. Uh, he has the opportunity to get this relic, which will give him gold. He has the opportunity to take this relic now. And uh, we're 50 minutes into this game. Finally, Hera is making 
what I believe to be the, the correct unit. But it's really tough for him to engage with so many Onagers alive. He needs to send in just a few of these Zerks to pick off the Onagers. And BL, you know, he's caught out of position here. So for the first time in a long time, MBL gets caught out of position with these Onagers. He should lose all of them. Definitely using the attack grounds key there. But yeah, they go down and, and now perhaps MBL is a bit less threatening to Hera. The, the pr big problem for Hera though is he doesn't have, he doesn't have uh, positioning. And he also doesn't really have the mobility. I know Zerks are pretty fast, but they're not as fast as something like Light Cab or Husser or Camels. So if MBL doesn't want to be in a fight, he can just run away. If he wants to catch up to his opponent, he can easily catch up. And I think we're really going to see this here when MBL starts to raid in a moment. Because he'll keep hair on his toes all game at this rate. Send, send the Hussars into the back of his opponent's economy, and he'll just slowly start to unravel his opponent. Now let's also keep in mind that MBL can sell resources and get a lot of gold from it with the Saracen market. So he shouldn't really have a concern when it comes to gold. I, I feel bad. Like, again, I didn't know exactly what went down in this game. I did have someone tell me to check it out. But I, I feel bad for Hera, man, because obviously this doesn't happen to him every game. But look what the Chieftains upgrade did there. Hera takes the score lead. Just talking about Hera losing units. Well, look at that. Look at MBL losing all those expensive camels. This is what I'm talking about. And MBL actually doesn't raid with the light cap. He uses the light cap to pick off the trebs. But he, he loses most of them. He only gets one trebuchet. And now we have hand cannons from MBL. So this has been a beautiful game of counters. First, Hera made the Zerks to counter the Onagers. Then the Camels, and then MBL, he mixes in the Gunpowder. And this is not something that Zerks were meant to fight. So what does Hera do? He adds Elite Skirm. This is an amazing, amazing, uh, sorry, Age of Empires 2 game. And it still feels like it's slightly better for MBL. He runs in, he picks off the Trebs, he runs out. MBL will lose this cat. Oh my goodness, that went down to what, 15 HP? Yeah, he will lose the castle now. And he will lose his trebuchets! And he will lose his trebuchets! What a match this is! So if you're Hera, you have to be quite careful with your berserks, because they're not cheap. They also heal up, because you got berserker gang, so that's nice. And you have to mass skirmishers on skirmishers, get tons of them. He even researched Onager earlier, so he could go for Onager now. And it wouldn't surprise me to see MBL mix in a few Bombard Cannons. So just how many units are we going to see this game? I'm telling you guys, we need to have a whole tournament that's just Saracen's Wars. Because <laughs> it's like the new Hun War. There's so many options. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't take that comment seriously. But I love Saracen's. It's so cool. 174 population versus 177. This is not a tournament. Uh, this is just a regular rated game between two of the best players. And this has been a treat, man. This has been a treat. Yep, and now we have Bombard Cannons from MBL. So, with Bombard Cannons, he will have range. And he can then also maneuver, which is nice. Maybe snipe these trebuchets, hit a clump of skirms. So MBL needs to chew up all the infantry, and once the infantry shoot up, his light cap can kill these skirmishers. And oh god, with one Onager shot, Hera, no! Oh, Hera micros this like a, like a madman. Look at the splits. This is such a risky game to play. He's going for the Bombard Cannons. He's splitting away. This is impressive micro all around for both players. Hera will kill both the Bombard Cannons, and he should kill the Onager, and he's so close there. He's so close to killing that castle. What a freaking display of skill from both players. I, can, I can't really tell you who came out on top there. They're both down to 160 population. The balls of this kid to micro that. that like, I'm thinking he's going to lose everything. And he ends up trading pretty uh, evenly there. And still, because of Hera's large massive units here, MBL hasn't been in a position where he can raid. You know, I said how he could hit the economy, but he hasn't been in that position. He needs all of his numbers here. 
super cool stuff here. But with all the expensive units out on the field, you could easily lose the game in one swing, as we've said many times here. And this is a risky game you play if you have this many skirms, not accompanied by any zerks. And yeah, he runs forward, and now he will run back, which is understandable. Okay, MBL is hitting the economy now. So, of course, as I said, MBL hasn't had the chance to do it. Maybe he thinks now is the time. Oh, that bomber cannon shot was huge. Hera, oh my god, that's another big bomber cannon shot. But Hera will kill the bomber cannon. And you can see how Hera is not pushing forward anymore because he has to deal with all of this. This could, this could change the entire game. Mbl with the onagers, with the bomber cannons, with the hand cannons. He's taking a good fight. He's still keeping his castle up. Can he kill this trebuchet with the final shot? Should be able to. And oh god, he's gonna kill the onager. He's gonna kill the elite skirms. He's killed the trebuchet. He's repairing the bomb market, and there's so many small things going on here. And look at him in Hera's economy. Hera, probably getting frustrated now. He doesn't have a lot of gold to keep making these berserks. And these trebuchets especially, he, he continues to lose them because of MBL's brilliance. And look at this, MBL will not only kill the treb, but he'll kill the onager. Hera, now at 160 population, it's 175 for MBL, and positionally, it is much better for MBL because he's able to raid so freely. Super cool stuff. MBL is Saracen, so we can sell what he's just done so, so we can get some gold, get some more upgrades. And look at the damage that's being done here. You know, 40 idols for Hera. Certainly not ideal to have that many idol villagers, and he's lost some as well, and it's so hard to track. It's so very difficult to track. So it seems obvious to me that whoever wins this area will win the game. This has been the most important area over the last couple minutes. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, I thought for a moment because those skirms were clumped up that they would all die. But they might die to the light cap. MBL engages. Ah, he's actually going after the trebuchet. Just whittling down those gold units. As long as he has the food to make more light cap, it's not the worst decision in the world, is it? It does boost Hera's confidence a little bit, I'm sure, but okay, this won't. And it's about time that MBL focuses on this side for the trebuchet or two. Hera's population is stronger than MBL's now. <laughs> They're both at 55-ish military. They're just throwing trebs at each other now, and MBL is able to kill those light cap and keep his treb alive. Will this come down to the lack of mobility of Vikings in this situation? Will this come down to the lack of Bombard Cannon? Possibly. So I really think that's been the difference in the Imperial Age, the fact that MBL's had the Bombard Cannons. But he does make a mistake, he loses that one, and it, don't tell me he's gonna lose this trebuchet. He loses the trebuchet as well, this game is just insanity. And now Hera needs to focus on this side just a little bit more. And MBL is sending a lot of units this way. So MBL has his own skirmishers. I think it's about time that he does that. It's a good decision. And he's going to kill this, isn't he? Of course he is. He keeps his castle alive still. Kills another trebuchet. This army's a bit weak, though. I mean, with the light cab out in the field, all skirmishers will not fare all that well, but it's something. It's something ranged. It's something that can, uh, in numbers, can still kill units that they don't directly counter. MBL holds on here, and he kills this castle. He will kill a dozen villagers, and this will kind of open up the, the floodgates. This will give him an entryway into the rest of Hera's economy. How pissed would you be if you're Hera? <laughs> you lost so many trebuchets, man. MBL, as I said, is a very stubborn player. But let's give credit to both of them for making this game so entertaining. Just wonder when MBL is going to research Hussar. 
He has two relics bringing in gold. I guess he continues to make traps and bombard cannons, so he doesn't want to use the gold for the Hussar upgrade, but I think that'd be helpful. 183, population for Hera. He's slowly losing map control, and MPL's at 197. And, oh my goodness, it seems like he wants to finish this one off. He's building seven more stables. Yep, yep, look at this, he's hitting the farmers. This is what he needs to do. And Hera's running kind of low on resources, guys. He doesn't have a lot of food. And, oh god, this could be it. This could be it. If MBL has four different groups of light cav, Hera will slowly lose his bills, and Hera needs to defend. He needs to defend this castle. Oh, uh, don't tell me it's going to end with a gigantic bombard cannon shot on these skirmishers. That would almost be a fitting end, but <laughs> a cruel end as well for Hera. Hera really needs to fight this now. He's fighting with his own light cav, which are weaker than Saracen light cav. And... His vil count is plummeting now. MBL even mixing in a few Mamelukes. I was wondering if we're going to see them this game. And MBL will take down this castle at this rate. So he'll take out the castle. He could then take out the trebuchets. MBL has been so damn stubborn with keeping everything alive. And just look at the flood. Look at the flood now. The game's going to end there. Hera realized, even though his population was pretty strong, he was going to lose so many villagers. And as you can see, villagers are going down left and right. MBL would have flooded the center. It was an amazing game, though. Uh, sure, I think we could chalk this up as a bit of a throw from Hera. It's never ideal. It's never good. It is never part of the plan to lose, uh, I don't know, was it 40 Arbalest? I think it was around 40 Arbalest. Yeah, th that's not good. That's not good. But what was good was this game. MBL's hold was pretty brilliant. How he held to the hills in early Imperial, was very patient with walls, and uh, the unit compositions from both are pretty good, honestly. I do think that Hera just lost this because of the fights. Positionally, it was good for him. He got the extra golds. Um, he did prioritize this area. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to have the stone to build three castles, but he prioritized it, was there, and fighting for it. But Saracens are probably always going to be better late game than Vikings. And that's because of the fact that they have better upgrades on their horses. They have that mobility. They still have the ranged upgrades. They have the hand cannons. They have the bombard cannons, the onagers. They just have so much. So I think for Hera, he just had to take better fights. And we, we talk so much about, uh, I think, unit... Well, I talk a lot about how units play out versus each other. But there's also different time windows associated with that. So... I think that maybe early imp, it, had Hera done better, he wins this game because MBL did not have any of these options or most of these options at that stage. Awesome game. I uh, I didn't want to say so during the game. MBL was like, hey, you should check out this match. <laughs> and so I decided to cast it. I didn't want to be spoiled because I don't like that. I like to try and learn along with the game and think about what the players might be thinking about and look at for what they might be looking for. And that was a good one. That was that was one of the best Rabia games I've seen in a long time. 531 kills for MBL. You know, looking at the economy, guys, look at the gold difference. That is not a lot. Normally, there's a couple of thousand different. There's not. Look at the stone collected. <laughs> now, Hera had a lot more food and a lot more wood, but he just couldn't put it to good use. We'll look at the technology stats. Hera actually had more researches. The map exploration was pretty amazing as well. 94% for Heron, 92 for MBL. The Relic Gold was even similar. This was a sick game. This was a sick game from two amazing players. So I'm going to be casting some more Age of Empires 2 stuff in a couple days of my live stream. We have community games every Thursday. We have the Hidden Cup coming up, which there's a video about. All the info is in that video description. I definitely would... Love to see you guys on the live stream if you guys have the time. I know time zones and whatnot complicates things, but I will be streaming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and there will be some amazing stuff to check out. As always, I will continue with more YouTube-only content. All the best highlights from those streams will go to YouTube. 
most of you know the drill by now. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a thumbs up, please, and I'll see you in the next one.